What's up, Anis Rossi? It's the Russian dude. Let's get straight to the point. Talk about some ridiculous Russian propaganda. Oh. Okay, we have a good one today. So, there is this uh, singer in Russia, extremely propagandistic one, and he's called Shaman. Probably you heard about him, he's singing extremely patriotic songs, he, he's like in his 30s, so he's the ideal person to brainwash younger generation of Russians, which is obviously much harder to be brainwashed than our fathers, our parents and grandparents. Okay, so doesn't matter. We already know that uh, President Joe Biden, he said that he's not going to run for the next presidential elections. So this guy, Shaman, he was singing over the weekend in front of the US consulate in Moscow. And then he said that, uh, guys, because of my performance, because of me singing the song, I am Russian, Joe Biden is no longer gonna become president of America. Uh, well, you can thank me now. I serve the motherland. Basically, he's attributing that Joe Biden <laughs> stopped in this election, stopped being in this uh, presidential election because of him singing. Or wait a second, does this mean that Russians once again are interfering into the US presidential elections? Well, that is a very good question. <laughs> but okay, <laughs> enough of this clown shrimp, now let me give you a brief update from the south and the east of Ukraine, and then we're also gonna talk about some very big escalation next to the Russian borders. First of all, if you remember from my previous uh, videos, there was an attack of Ukrainian naval drones against Russian military targets on the Crimean Peninsula. Long story short, the Ministry of Defense of Russia, they said that we were able to intercept every single one of these drones, well, until these satellite images which show the comparison before and after appeared online, showing that indeed a Russian military base next to the Nuzlav lake in Crimea, well, a lot of uh, destruction happened. Next is the video from Kherson, which shows that the Russian positions continue to be destroyed by fire, whether this is just a spontaneous, whether this was a mother nature, or in this example, these were Ukrainians themselves who helped uh, fire to begin. <laughs> Let's call it like this. In Zaporozhye, a Russian multiple launch rocket system called Buk was destroyed thanks to a Ukrainian HIMARS attack. And then also over this weekend, at least two more Russian oil refineries one in Rostov and another one in Tuapse were targeted by Ukrainian drones. As always, Russians said that they intercepted everything, but, well, <laughs> videos simply do not lie. Along Pakrovsky frontline, a very interesting video appeared online recently, and basically what it is showing is that Ukrainians, first of all, using FPV drones, were able to find a Russian military truck, which tried to kinda hide next to the forest. It also brought a couple of D-30 mortars, guns or artillery systems. And so, once again, all of this was in the open field for the Ukrainian drone operators. Later, Ukrainians used American ACS Paladin. Well, this military truck along with its cargo, it was never able to even become functional. But unfortunately, there is some sort of progress for the Z army along eastern front lines. Specifically, in the settlement pro called Progress, Russians were able to achieve a minor success and even enter some parts of this city. This is an extremely small village, and still, it took Russians more than three months to start entering it. Besides that, the Z army was also able to achieve anywhere between minor and medium progress in the following settlements – Krasnohorivka, Pischana, Lozavatska, Novoalexandrovka, Andreevka, and even New York. Yes, New York, the one which is in Ukraine, it is the very same city, like, it is even spelled exactly the same as American New York, but yes, this one is obviously in Ukraine. Chasov Yar, which Russians unfortunately destroyed all the way to the ground, and then they retreated from the city, but apparently recently they resume their attempts, well, fights continue, but still not a single significant meaningful progress is being achieved by the Z army. And then in Marinka, Ukrainian FPV drone was able to precisely target one of Russian tanks, and well, the fireworks were quite extensive. And now let's briefly talk about the potential escalation next to the Russian borders. In order for you guys to have a full picture, right here first of all is the video from Rostov Milerva military airfield. Once again, local residents reported some loud noises 
as always Russians intercepted everything according to them, but well, videos like this show that there was a successful attack by Ukrainians. And then even we even have this satellite image, which shows the potential position of the Russian military planes, some of them I'm assuming are either fully destroyed or severely damaged. Because of this, Russians have to relocate their military planes all across different airfields, and specifically recently a very big concentration of Russian fighter jets and military bombers were spotted in Olenya airfield on Kola Peninsula. Specifically what we're talking about is 27 total number of Russian military planes just on this airfield alone. So far, this is a record number of planes located in the same place at the same time, so it kind of allows us to assume that potentially Russians are preparing for something very big, most likely another massive attack against the territory of Ukraine, hopefully by that time more air defense systems will arrive to protect the Ukrainian sky, but I mean, yes, assembling so many planes in the same place at the same time, it definitely should mean something. And well, NATO, specifically its member, the United States, they did not want to wait and find out post factum what Russians are trying to do. So what they already did, the Americans, I mean, is that they deployed their legendary B-52 bomber next to the borders with Russia. Specifically, it started flying from the airfield, first of all located in Romania. And right before flying to Romania, they did most likely some kind of reconnaissance activity literally next to the Russian border between Finland and the Russian Federation. They were flying there, Putin is obviously furious, he did not want NATO to be expanding to the east, closer to the borders with Russia. And now literally he has the legendary <laughs> American Bombers 52 flying like literally next to the borders. Well, Putin failed to say the least. And yes, this American B-52, it even approached this Kola Peninsula, where this airfield Oleni, which we just talked about, is located, along with the port for Russian vessels and even submarines. So, yeah, it was not just a recreational flight, to say the least. And so, once again, later they were transported to Romania, and it is expected that by the year of 2040, this base in Romania, it will be one of the biggest NATO bases as close to the territory of Russia, unless some other significant events happen. And besides this, even the country of Latvia decided to reinforce its border, and they put these defense structures, more also commonly known as the Dragon Teeth, on the border also between Latvia and Russia. And to sum it all up, let's now briefly talk about the new potential peace plan, which allegedly Trump presented according to the ex-Prime Minister of the Britain of the United Kingdom, Boris Johnson. And uh, yes, well, these two guys, they might not be the most trustworthy people, but uh, well... I'm just here presenting news as it is. I leave it to I, I will leave it up to you guys to decide whether you want to believe them or not. Once again, here I am just presenting news as they are. So normally this would be a Patreon chapter, but I'm in a good mood today. We haven't seen each other for a couple of days already. So yeah, let's just continue talking about this chapter on YouTube right here. But yeah, if you want to support my work. Patreon memberships is the best way to do it right now, well, YouTube is non-existent at this point. The Russian dude keeps going thanks to your Patreon donations, so guys, feel free to check it, the link is down below, thanks so much, now let's continue. And so yeah, according to the ex-Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Boris Johnson, who recently spoke with potential future President of America, Donald Trump, he said that he has potentially a new peace plan for Russia and Ukraine, so-called Peace Plan 2.0. One of the very first things is to not let Ukraine take back all of its territories, not to return to the territories of 1991, but to return to the territories before February 24th, 2022, right before this invasion. At the same time, Crimea will remain under Russian control, but Ukraine will be guaranteed the acceptance into the European Union and also NATO. Because of this, the Ukrainian army will be able to replace at least 70,000 potential US soldiers on the European soil, which will significantly save a lot of money for the US taxpayers. 
And because of saving a lot of money not having these 70,000 American soldiers on European soil, this money can better go equipping Ukrainian army. So, with the help of America, with the help of the rest of NATO members, they can make Ukraine as the most powerful army in the world, because they are serving literally as the wall between Russia and the rest of Europe. And couple of last benefits for Russia, specifically for Putin, is that somehow NATO guarantees that those people speaking Russian will not be discriminated in Ukraine. Apparently, this is one of the requirements from Putin. And another thing is that sanctions will be removed and Russia will be reintegrated back into the world economy, into the world communication. And Russia will be back into the world arena. In my personal opinion, this does sound like a plan which favors more Russia and Putin because, uh, well, they <laughs> they keep territories which they illegally occupy. This is already ma a major red flag. But but in return, they're going to make Ukraine extremely powerful that Putin allegedly will never even think anymore about attacking this country. Once again, extremely questionable peace plan. My job here is to present you the facts as they are so you can decide. But for example, one of American experts, John Bolton, he said that this is a disastrous plan. <laughs> Putin first of all need to be fully destroyed because yeah, if you just allow him to walk away with everything he did, it will take him just several years to just... He just hopes that the world will forget everything and then he can do exactly the same. He will find another reason why he should invade again uh, Ukraine once again. So yeah, total destruction of the regime of Putin. This is exactly how you prevent any future aggression from Ukraine in the future. Zelensky himself countless times said that freezing the conflict with Putin leads nowhere, Putin will only take this time to resupply the army and then attack once again. And I mean, why would even Ukraine give up 30% of their territories? This simply does not make sense. But obviously there is a huge problem for Ukraine right now, specifically with the soldiers, with the number of them, because a lot of Ukrainians, they want uh, to protect their country, but not too many of them actually want to do it. I mean, I can understand them. I think we all can understand them. Nobody wants to risk their life, right? Specifically, 58% of Ukrainians are, are in favor that the mobilization should be more tough, that there should be even more people going to the army. But the reality is, yes, nobody wants to go. And now I'm also curious about you guys. What do you think about this potential peace plan 2.0 by potential president of America, Donald Trump? So please let us all know down below in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel. This was interesting, informative or both. If you missed my previous episode, it will appear to my left. And then just a very interesting episode will appear right in the middle. All the other useful links are down below. PayPal donations, Patreon, Instagram, merch. Thanks so much for watching. Sit more.